They say a sloth lives outside the net and designs games for pleasure. No one knows for sure, but I intend to find out. Can it be played? Today, instead of bringing a fictional board game to life, I will be turning a fictional video game into a board game. And within Reboot, the first fully CGI TV show of all time, there are a ton of games to choose from. Over four seasons, Reboot saw drastic changes in tone and style, giving the audience something new each week, all under the simple premise of imagining what was really going on inside of our computers. The Canadian production company Mainframe is responsible for creating some of my favorite TV shows of all time. Beast Wars, Zix, Shadow Raiders, and of course Reboot. So I hope today's game will make them proud. The episode I chose to work with is excluding Identity Crisis, High Code, Painted Windows, Web World Wars, Game Over, Prog, and Nullzilla, my favorite episode of all time. Enzo the Smart. Feeling like he can't compare to Bob and Dot, Enzo goes to Fong for help. When left alone with access to the entire system, Enzo finds a way to become the smartest person in mainframe by lowering the clock speed and making everyone else dumb. Congratulations! For what? For finding a way out of here! Before he can fix this mistake, a GameCube drops and traps him in... An Olympic-style game where two teams compete in several events, racking up points to determine starting positions in the winner-take-all final race. The this episode is a perfect embodiment of Reboot's first season. Weird, wacky hijinks in a super original sci-fi world. No one else was doing what Reboot was doing, and I hope the rulebook I created for Video Athlete conveys the same level of fun and imagination with none of the frustration Enzo felt as the coach. <laughs> If Video Athlete were an actual 90s PC game, this is the board game tie-in Milton Bradley released alongside it, for some reason. I looked to classic board games from the 80s and 90s, as well as dice games like Quinto, Decathlon, and of course, Yahtzee. <gasps> Yahtzee! Like a lot of older board games, Video Athlete is dice-heavy and luck-based, with players making small decisions hoping to get the highest score possible each round. It's a two-player game meant to be played in 20 or 30 minutes, something without too much thought that even a clock-down mainframer could play. What are points? <laughs> Firstly, players choose which team to play as. The users, or... Those oh-so-wacky mainframers! Gameplay consists of several quick dice games. You begin with three preliminary games to earn points for the final round. We begin with Shot Put. Players roll six dice, hoping for as few ones as possible both to roll all of their dice as well as to get the highest score. Next, there's Pole Vault, where players first roll all of their dice, hoping to save one each throw. The more they have, the more they roll for the big jump. Lastly, there's Basketball, a very simple war-style game where players assign hidden die rolls to each of their five players. Center, power forward, small forward, shooting guard, and point guard. Each position faces off, and whoever wins the most face-offs wins. This game is done four times to simulate basketball's four quarters. For each minigame won, players receive one point. If they happen to win all six, they get a bonus seventh point. This is to simulate the episode where the users end up with seven stars on their scoreboard. These points can be spent in the Eliminator to modify die rolls. And speaking of the Eliminator, this is the winner-take-all final event, and the bulk of the game. Players have a total of 24 rolls of the dice, which they can split between the eight sections of the race course as they see fit, keeping in mind that they each have a minimum amount of dice required. Each section of the course is played one at a time by both players. The goal is to get the most points possible by saving dice according to the rules of that section. But note that if you lose a section by scoring less points, you get to save one of the unused dice you rolled. 
This could be a major bonus to get max points in the next section, so strategically you may want to lose one section to improve your score on the next. This is why the die rolls for the Eliminator are done behind the divider used in basketball. The points earned in the preliminary games can be used in these sections to give a plus one or minus one on a single die roll. The starting line and finishing line tracks are simply rolling at least one die and saving the highest number. Cross Country is trying to create a sequence of numbers such as 4, 5, 6. The obstacle course is choosing two dice that when added together create a third dice. In this case, you have to roll at least three dice, but you don't have to save three to get a lot of points. You could roll two sixes and save them both because six plus zero equals six. Pinball and rollerblades are rolling dice and only saving odds or evens, respectively. The lava course requires players to save the dice that have the longest gap between them. For example, if you roll a 1 and 6, you have to choose them. Finally, the minecarts allow you to save at most a pair of the same numbers. Add up the total of all your die rolls, and whoever has the highest score wins! I also included an Enzo the Smart story mode, which is essentially a single player variant where the user and mainframe or teams receive automatic scores on certain tracks to mirror the plot of the episode. Whoa! Pixelacious! So, if you're in the mood for a dice game themed after a 90s cartoon, but aren't in the mood to do too much thinking, then Video Athlete is the game for you. Thank you for watching, and Mike, don't forget to tell the folks at home about our sponsor. That smashing come from behind victory was brought to you by Soothing 32-Bit Lotion, because you itch. You have to look within yourself to save yourself from your other self. Really? Alphanumeric!